Pam, how are you? Pam, how are you? Can you hear me? Is my microphone on? Yeah, it's on. Hello. Hi, Laura, how are you? Really good to see you guys. Alan, thank you. Pam, I enjoy talking to you about lots of things that we have in common. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it's a uh, hair, makeup, lighting, you know. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to wait for a few more people to come on. I'm not sure if we will have a lot of people on because um, my, you know, as uh, I've been posting to those of you who have figured it out. Uh, I'm no longer running or in charge of Pat Butinsky Art Talk. Um, it has been stolen. Um, it is now being operated by hackers, which I call pirates. Um, they pretty much are in control of that account. And if there's any Thing that you're interacting with regarding messages or what have you from that account. It's not me. Um, I am completely locked out of it and uh, I cannot even see it. They've also uh, hacked in and blocked me out of Get Your Cray activity on my second account. So they have complete control of that at this time. Um, I've gone through all the channels to alert uh, and quickly try to recover the account, but they're very fast. And um, what I did is I received a link from someone asking me for help, and I get a lot. I mean, when you have 73,000 followers, <laughs> you know, maybe, Maybe you know, if you know 20,000 of these people, I mean, know, know them, then it's, hi, hi, Christina. If you know 20,000 of them, that's, that's a computer brain. Um, you know, we have interactions and I talk to people who reach out or comment and what have you, but you really don't know once the numbers start getting up there, um, everyone and how long they've been watching and how long they've been following and you know how closely they've been monitoring you and this isn't to bring paranoia um it's just something i didn't much think about and uh and i've had a really great organic uh success on on instagram um, when we first started out uh christina Ray Mack uh, was one of the first groupies that we were pals and um, a couple of girls from Australia, um, Sue Elizabeth and Jess Swan was just starting out and um, we would end a uh, bird on a whim shortly thereafter and we would send each other gifts and get together and uh, talk on the phone. There was a few people who were very sick and we would talk late at night. And it was very, very personal. Um, and, you know, and the more you interacted with these people, um, other people started finding you. It wasn't controlled by the algorithm. It was really controlled by uh, much more of a community as though you were out of virtual reality and you were in the marketplace and having taught different places or showed in different places with other people, you just started to uh, network. Uh, and so it was really a social media network and this niche for artists was, I used to call it a movement because I couldn't believe I was in the middle of this um, where everybody was cheering each other on. It was not nearly as competitive as it is now uh, we were all rooting for each other and uh, 
if we did critique each other, we'd only speak into the lives of someone that said, would you speak into my life, <laughs> you know? But having given you all that background, um, it got to the point now where we're dealing with algorithms. So you're watching that numbers are dropping and you don't know why. And you get followers and you lose followers every day. It, it's uh, you, you go uphill, you, you know, two steps forward, three steps back. So you start to get distracted in watching the algorithm and uh, it starts to distract from the work. Hey, Andy, Allison, how are you? And so what I'm leading up to is I kind of lost touch with that, that things were changing in terms of being familiar with people, in terms of uh, safety. Um, and so someone reached out to me for help. And, and as I was saying before, when you have that many followers, you get a lot of messages, a lot of people, you know, um, you know, th think that it's just you and them. It's just you and them. And, and I want them to feel that personal touch, but it, it is impossible for me to respond, uh, in a very personal way to 73,000 people. It's just impossible. You know, it's like being at a concert, you know, and like singing a song and you got a lot of people there that go, you know, I just love you and I want to talk to you afterward, you know, uh, I don't think I'm a rock star. I've said that since the beginning, but all of a sudden you got a lot of eyes, uh, you know, on your account and a lot of them are following for different reasons. And so I got a request. A lot of them, I will say, you know, I really can't help you, but a lot of them I do help. A lot of people I do help. And uh, this person contacted me and it was somebody who followed me and I wasn't very close to her, but close enough. I'd seen her around and interacted and I think she might have taken some of my classes and stuff. So people that have taken my classes, I pretty much know who they are um, because through Thinkific, I get email information and I also get alerted as to when somebody registers. So I, I try to keep, a, stay available for that. But this person contacted me and I, you know, asked me if I could help them get their blue seal. Um, they have about 14,000 followers um, and they wanted to, you know, become official and have people feel that they were a safe person to do business with, which we're all looking to do. And so integrity is very important. So asked me to talk about integrity and how hackers will, if they can't get money and extort money out of you, they will begin to destroy your integrity. So my hackers got in by um, this one person who got through and I had said no. And I was just sitting by myself in the afternoon. I mean, looking, you know, standing back from my art and I was thinking, you know, are, are, are you too much of a big shot to help this person out? And I was like, I, I was really having a head trip about it. So I went back on and she had sent me another, I said, no. And, and I said, those things really don't work and they're really not helpful. And a lot of people apply and don't get them. And then she said, can I try? Can I at least try? So I said, okay. And I clicked the link and it was not so much a link, but it was to take a screenshot of a link. So you don't need to click the link, but once you take a screenshot of the link, they're in. And so I didn't know what was going on at first. So a couple hours went by and I'm trying to get back into my account and, you know, report it, but they quickly confiscated my email. So everything was getting routed to them that I was trying to send to Instagram and my phone number. So I didn't have authentication uh, ways because everything was going to them. And I didn't figure that out until I kept trying and trying and even sending photos of myself because I'm on my account and they ask you to send photos of yourself. And I did that and they kept saying they couldn't authenticate me. And um, I finally figured out that because I wasn't 
getting the email responses from IG and I wasn't getting the phone responses from IG that they had in fact rerouted everything and changed my phone number and my email address. And then they went into Facebook. They went into Facebook and it's just so I got a notification from Facebook to confirm that this person was in fact deceased, which is me. So I'm dead. I mean, this, you, you can't make this stuff up. So it's really been a fiasco, you know, and I've been hoping and praying and trying to go through all the right channels. And I know that I'm under a big pile of doo-doo and a big pile of billions of people who are being hacked or have a problem and want tech support. So it's really, really rough. So it's not just a matter of losing the numbers that you work so hard for, but I lost all the content, all the things I wrote uh, to all of you about my work and about my thoughts or maybe shared things that we go through, like through the pandemic or teaching tips or whatever. You know, I wrote those on the fly. When I posted, I wrote them. I didn't, you know, make them up in advance. I didn't save them. It was uh, all very intuitive. That's the way I, that's the way I operate. And um, I cannot access any of that stuff. So I can't get back any of the copy. I can't get back any of the history. And um, there are people, I cannot possibly remember all of the IG handles of the people that followed me. I can remember their name, but sometimes their IG handles are different. So I was unable to notify people. And if I did notify people, they didn't recognize the account it was coming from. And so they were leery of that. So I just started posting in a small way and asking some other artists that have a, a, a bigger reach. Um, because now only about 40 people on a good day are seeing my posts. So I cannot reach anyone. And that's such a strange feeling because I used to be able to come on and talk to a lot of people and reach a lot of people and serve a lot of people. And that was always my, my motive. And um, so I really want to let you guys know uh, and to spread the word that I am not operating that account, okay? Um, if you get any emails uh, or you get any, they have my link tree. If you get any uh, private messages from me, uh, one some people were getting stuff like from Bitcoin, of course, that I'm you know I'm involved in this Bitcoin scheme, a pyramid scheme, and I'm trying to get people to uh, you know invest. You know, it's like, okay, that destroys my integrity. I mean, when you're on Instagram and you're selling art, it is a huge amount of trust on all parties' parts, okay? People are buying stuff online from somebody that they haven't pers personally met and they're trusting you once they pay you to send them the art. None of us are Amazon or these big companies. So there is a lot of trust and reputation and integrity is everything. And that is the biggest thing that, and really the only thing that you have, and that's your good name. That's why you don't get into uh, gossip. A lot of people get into gossip. It's poison, it's poison. If you're gonna gossip with them, they're gonna gossip about you. And I hate to tell you the real, but lay low. Politics, lay low. Uh, political, uh, uh, racial, all of the stuff that we went through through this pandemic, 
again, it's not a matter of not having an opinion. It's a matter of knowing when to speak and when to be quiet. And my main thing here was to stay focused on that I was making art, selling art, and teaching art, and encouraging artists. So I worked very hard to um, field things like that that would pull me into a controversy of gossip mongering, even privately with uh, people. Um, I would protect your integrity to the death. That's all I got to say to you. There's been lots of people that have reached out and said, I think this person's copying you. I think this is happening. I think that's happening. And I'll just say, I think they're learning. You know, I don't like it, but they're going to talk about somebody else. They're going to talk about you, right? It's like people that have affairs, Okay. You're gonna have an affair, you're gonna leave your wife, you're very unhappy, you're gonna leave your husband very unhappy, then you're gonna get remarried, and are you gonna trust each other? I don't know. <laughs> but, so the second thing is, don't take any, any messages from that account. It's not me, all right? And I will, you know, make an announcement, take out ads, whatever, if I get that account back, all right? Until then, I just got this wee little account of 200 people, and so it's probably not going to be my bread and butter. I realize that I no longer have an avenue for income because I was not in galleries. I did not uh, have a website because this was pretty much functioning as my website, and having uh, been been traversing um, the highs and lows of Meniere's disease. Um, I really learned a new way to operate and to still um, be viable, to still produce something and not, you know, be having pity parties day in and day out. Although it's okay to have a pity party. We're artists. We're very feeling. They're all valid, but you probably don't want to stay there too long. So I uh, had found a really lovely community uh, and that I could work from home. From. And I didn't have to schlep art to um, shows, to outdoor festivals, to um, galleries that, you know, you're on, you're off, you're on, you're off. Um, and those are all really great things. And I love doing them because I'm such a people person. But part of one of the things about Meniere's disease is that you, you can have a series of vertigo episodes, but it also leaves you uh, impaired after so many years. It's been about 20 years, so my balance is permanently impaired. But I just learned how to walk um, dizzy, and I just kind of normalize it. But, you know, I'm not going to get in the car and, and buzz all over the state or three states away like I used to and come back in a day. So this was really, really kind of it for me. This was my jam. So this, my business has pretty much been shut down, okay? Um, I don't, you know, you can block my old account if you want to. Uh, you can report it. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure if it gets shut down, if that's good or bad for me. But I can tell you that I wouldn't wish this on anybody else, and I do not want my account to be the vehicle to hurt you guys, okay? And I'm not trying to sound, you know, like St. Joan of Arc or somebody. I'm telling you that what does it matter to me, you know? Uh, I want you to succeed. I don't want this to happen to somebody else. It doesn't make me feel good when I hear that all kinds of other people are, are getting hacked. You know, sometimes people are trying to comfort you and they are, and they're saying, well, you know, you know, you know, if you, just to make you feel better, you know, X, Y, and Z got hacked, you know, or just to make you feel better, we're not selling any work anyway, you know, and it's all in good, good intention. But what I want is for you guys not to get your businesses stolen. And also diversify, diversify. You know, I 
have had my website in the works for forever, but I was very busy and selling a lot and teaching a lot. And I had my online classes out there. And so just handling that stuff, you know, uh, well, okay, being responsive and well, I really was, you know, had slowed down the process of building in other areas because I didn't think I could service them all well. So, <coughs> so this could end up to be a blessing in disguise. Sometimes you got to pivot and sometimes you have to change. So uh, now I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to pivot to. But um, reiterate, don't take any messages. Don't click any links, no matter how much they bug you. And they watch you and they will make friends with you. They will, you will think they're that person that's talking to you. It's really incredible. They're very, very savvy. And it's not just one person uh, because my son reached out and uh, tried to connect with them and left them a voice message and they left him a voice message back. And he said, you know, please let this, let this woman's account go. She has a disability. This is her income, this and that. And, you know, God bless you. And he was very kind and everything. And, and they said, well, I know I understand and I'm sorry, but I can't. But in the meantime, we heard a whole room full of people. It sounded like PBS fundraising. There's that many people operating these things. And my heart actually goes out to the people that they're using to do this. Um, I know that my, my hacker came from, comes from a Nigeria and what they do is sometimes the people there are even illiterate. Many of them are literate, but there's many that are illiterate and they really can't get jobs. But what they do know is technology. And so they get them in rooms and they put them to work. And, you know, I don't know what their pay requirements are. Certainly not much, but it, it very much may be an incentive kind of thing. Whereas, you know, if you can extract this much money from this one and that much money, that's going to base on how much money you're going to make. So they're, they're kind of trapped too. So it's a mess. So just uh, double authenticate, all right? So go into your settings, all right? And you will see privacy, all right? In your settings, there's like a little, a little thing that looks like this up in the corner of your, in the corner of your profile page. Press that and go into settings and you'll, there's all different subjects in there. And you need to go to privacy. And when you click on that, you need to go to authentication. And you need to double authenticate. And I also would suggest um, using WhatsApp because it is having that as an alternative to send your, your messages to should you get hacked. And they reroute all of your information. WhatsApp is um, encrypted. And so if you have a message go to WhatsApp, um, you should be able to get IG and be able to get in there before them to um, change your password. All right, changing your password frequently is good. And you know if you've been using the same password across platforms, um, which, you know, it's easier to remember, um, change them change them, change them and save them, or take the suggested one, which are all those garbly gook numbers and have, save it to your keychain. All right. Um, otherwise they, they have all kinds of ways to start to, to, uh, it's like a domino effect, get through the walls. All right. So I don't know if that helps anybody, but, um, I wish uh, Alka could come on. She has such a story of personally being involved with hackers in a court of law and winning. And um, she's been very, very supportive since the beginning. Um, it's amazing the people that I knew, but I didn't know their heart. 
that came forward and that have really, really supported and helped me and shared everything and been brave. And I wasn't asking them to be brave, to let me know what is going on. And I just want to, you know, I just want to give a shout out to you guys. You know, Leslie Boos recently lost her account and she couldn't get it back. Um, Elka had lost hers and she finally did get it back. Um, but it was quite a story and it was um, a couple uh, that I don't know if I'm allowed to, to share her story, um, that um, it was based in the mafia. <laughs> and uh, they pretty much tried to steal her business and another artist's business. And she tried to get a lot of other artists on board and every one of them wigged out. They wigged out. A lot of them were male. I'm not gonna say males are chicken, all right? But th the only people that stood up were she and another female artist that stood up and took this thing all the way to court in person and she won it. And she's been really, really helpful to me. Um, so, um, at this point, I just want to say that I don't really have anything to lose. I have everything to gain and nothing to lose. So they got my business, they got my reach, they got my followers, and people who were my cozy up best friends, you know, my people that endorse me or people that, you know, want to collaborate and whatever, it's like, see you later, you know? Like, so it's a very fickle business, but, um, but God, you know, I know this is the first time you guys have heard me talk about this, but it's like, okay, all right, when all else is done, I've got this big studio now that I could definitely afford when I stepped out into it, that I didn't take it quickly. It took me seven years to make the move so I could open up and have people come to me for workshops. And I could support it and make films and make more videos and make more classes, which I still will do. Um, and I will probably set up on YouTube um, and work on my website and what have you. So you'll you'll see me around. Um, I'll do a little on Facebook, but again, I still have to steer clear of um, these hack jobs because, uh, you know, I'm dead. <laughs> so <laughs> you can't kill me. Right, I got nothing to lose. So, but I also do know that at the end of the day, if your identity, and it's been a real identity crisis, is all caught up in you being an artist, and we talk about I am an artist, being proud of that, yes, but if your identity, if your soul, if your, you know, everything is caught up in your work, and then it's stolen, you get to the point where you're saying, I thought I was more than one dimensional. I thought I valued my identity as a mom. I thought I valued my identity as a sister. I thought I valued my identity in Christ, who's my savior. And I realized that I had built not only an empire, but an idol. And this thing has been torn down. And now uh, when I walk down the street, who am I? Who am I? It's really something to, to search your soul about, okay? And, uh, and live, live into it, live into it. Um, I'm starting to actually come over, you know, out of the valley and actually be glad for the things that I've been learning and uh, really learning not to trust myself and my gifts and talents, which I've worked very hard to develop. It's, it hasn't been magic. It hasn't just been, oh, let my intuition fly and the spirit's going to paint through me. Um, even though I have the Holy Spirit inside of me and other people are spiritual in different ways. But um, if that's happening, then, you know, that's called possession. <laughs> and you, you don't want to be possessed, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, but anyway, you know, you, you, it's real important to be who you are. So hi, Christy. 
Um, so yeah, one day you can be a social media star and the next day you can be top liver. So, you know, nobody wants to give you free art supplies and, uh, yada, yada, yada. So, uh, I appreciate the seven years that I have. I appreciate you. Um, I want to be able to teach you guys. We came on a little while ago. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to do some arting. Um, but we certainly can start to do that and I can come on to my little tribe that I have, uh, on Fridays and do the stir crazy cafe because, uh, I'm not doing a whole lot of shipping or anything, <laughs> even though I have a huge room, a shipping heaven. I finally got a shipping heaven. You need any shipping done? Maybe that could like ship for you guys or. Yeah, this could turn into something else. Or maybe you could use my studio to, to host a workshop. Mm. Well, anyway, I'm going to have to reinvent myself. But, uh, man, I got mad boxes. I got a mad chipping table. I used to crawl around on the floor. Uh, thanks, Imogene. Thank you, honey. Uh, I used to crawl around on the floor, you know, I, at my age, you know, senior citizen, and be uh, cutting boxes and wrapping them up and, you know, holding it down with my knee and the other one in my, and taping my teeth. <laughs> yes. You know the drill. You know the drill. And so, uh, and, and, you know, and it started to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, that's a wonderful thing, but there's always a learning curve. And so then, you know, at a certain point, I did the next thing was to step out and get some space and stop renting space for all my boxes and things and, and bring them in and have them here and get our dining room table back so my family could actually eat on a table and not on their laps watching television, which they lovingly did. So thank you, Greg. You go ahead and... Um, so if anybody's here that wants to do a little art, um, I just was going to talk a little bit about uh, Sketchbook, uh, which is always a good place to go back and sort things out. And um, I love to uh, work in a sketchbook because I don't feel stressed out that I have to show it, although I often do show, show it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. You know, Christy, you know, if, if it's, it's like quality, I think it's quality over quantity, you know, because I think uh, that the numbers are deceiving and I'm kind of, kind of glad in a way that I've, uh, you know, had this dose of reality and, uh, you know, you, you make films and people are watching them and everything, but all of a sudden, what if nobody was watching? <laughs> It's so weird. So it's like I got so used to wanting to show people my work. You know what I mean? So I still post. It's like, you know, if you're an artist, you want to see people, you show people your work. You're like a little kid. You're like, oh, mom, look what I made. Look what I made. You know, and all of a sudden it was like, well, who am I going to show? Who's going who's gonna to see it? You know? And I realized what an immature little kid I am. So anyway. That's kind of my reel of what I'm going through right now. Uh, I wanted to give you guys a heads up because again, you know, there's bigger accounts than my old one, but that's a lot of people they can work, you know, they can work over. And I really want you to, um, um, really want you to, uh, if you don't get the answers from me, Google and find out for yourself, okay? Um, there are all kinds of ways to understand who hackers are, who what phishing is, phishing, P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. They are people that are literally, what they're doing is fishing around to see if they can hook someone. And that's what's going on behind the scenes through my account. The hackers got control of the account, and what they do is they fish from there. And you guys are the fish, all right? And the way you get hooked is by clicking on the links that they send you, or I've even had uh, P 
people try to buy um, commission pieces from me and go back and forth for two weeks only to be a phony and to send me a bogus check via mobile and um, and finding out that they are just overpaying and then they want you to return the money and being a person of integrity, you're like, of course I'll return the money. Of course, I'm not gonna keep your money. I mean, why would I do that, you know? Uh, that, that would ruin me for, for, for one overpayment. <laughs> and they're like, but you know, this is going to turn out to be a good thing. Cause I think I'm going to take two and it gets crazy. That's all I got to tell you. So just hang up the phone and don't talk to them. All right. Just hang it up. Don't talk to them. So that's my advice. And, um, yeah, I'm just going to do a little art for you because it's kind of depressing, but, um, but I'm okay. Really? All right, all right. So I have my Arteza sketchbook. The Arteza still likes me. They liked me when I was, you know, first started out. They sent me stuff, and um, they've been so faithful. I love them, and 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 uh, so I'm sticking with them. And um, I've also been blessed with the, you know, bigger paint companies. Uh, but um, they sometimes kind of get you to do a whole lot of work for them, a whole lot of marketing work for them for a couple tubes of paint, really. And, uh, and to say, oh, you know, uh, Liquitex uh, likes me. You know, <laughs> can we talk? Can we just be real here? So, but I have to say that Arteza um, gave me so much stuff and uh, I have shown it and I actually never really use my affiliate links and stuff. But I did share it with you guys because I did do think that the brands are really good and getting better all the time and they listen to feedback and they rapidly make changes. So one of the changes they made was in their, their sketchbooks. Their sketchbooks at one point, uh, one side would, would have tooth and the other side would be smooth. But now they have these really nice watercolor sketchbooks and um, they are reasonable. They come packed in threes and they sell out very quickly because everybody now knows how great they are. And they've also sent me gouache. And I really love gouache. And I set it up like this because I was playing with it last night, a Mother's Day at home. And I haven't been able to set up a palette in a long time because I didn't work with watercolors. But this kind of gouache is water soluble. So um, it you can reactivate it with water. So I'm gonna, I, you know, I'll turn this down, all right? And I might turn commenting off. Um, Anchel, how do I turn my commenting off? Let's see. Uh, what's that? No questions yet. Okay. All right, that can go away. All right. Is that comments? Turn off commenting. Okay. All right. So now you can see this. Oh, I did it. All right. So first I'm going to have you look down here and see how I laid out. And they have like 60 colors. So uh, it's really cool. So I hope you can see this. I have my old holder like from home. So you'll be able to see part of this, but you'll be able to see my whole pan. Okay. So I put them out kind of like in a chromatic way, but also with colors that I that I know mix well with each other. Because like I said, they have about 60 colors that are all mixed and everything. And uh, so it's really hard to choose from. So, but I put those out yesterday and I can still use them today. So I'm gonna turn this down a little bit more. I think you can see that a little bit better, but I'm not sure. You know, I'm still doing the hokey thing. All right. Let's see. All right. So anyway, I'll just kind of give you a little demo, which is something fun to, to go off and play with if you like. Um, I'm going to use some new brushes. And uh, so they're not all funky. And I'm gonna go into my yellow 
And I'm gonna maybe just make some circles. Now remember, these these are not these are not uh, acrylic gouache. Acrylic gouache, once it dries, it's basically acrylics, but it has a matte finish. It's not designer gouache. Designer gouache, I could go back into this and lift it or make it wet again or move the paint. Um, so you see how, how nice and thin it can get? And that can happen, as you know, with acrylics as well. But um, unlike acrylics, this is not going to be permanent if I don't want it to be permanent. So uh, a lot of times I have to avoid uh, certain color and that's what I'll show you that I'm doing with this. So I'm just making these like yellow yellow circles so that I can paint around them. Because if I paint on them, um, they'll continue to move no matter how many hours go by. But I like that because I, I'm a watercolorist and, and I really enjoy um, that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna mix a nice green with a yellow and a um, cerulean blue. And I'm just gonna kind of go in and kind of stay off. Now it can be really thick like that. You can see it or it can be transparent like watercolor. But these are actually opaque watercolors. Almost all of them are opaque. The, the uh, transparency might be uh, translucent. Some of them might have a translucency, but none of them are transparent like a watercolor can be. So they're all uh, very much opaque in terms of the property of the paint. Okay, and if I get it onto the yellow, all right, I can lift that yellow and I can turn it into more of a green because the blue is mixing with the yellow, all right? Just for showsies. But I'm basically gonna stay off of that. Uh, maybe I'll go for some, and you know what's really cool, I just wanna I'm show you this, that again, I set this stuff up last night and I'm going into this and I can use it today. You know, it's not dried out and lost. And even if it does dry out, I can spray it and activate it and it'll, it'll be like pan watercolors. Capiche? All right, so I'm gonna go in here and maybe do a little orange moments and just kind of stay semi away from them. You know, I'm not precious with things because I'm an abstract banger. But I'll just show you some of the different colors and stuff, which are fun. And if I want to, they actually have whites and stuff. And because they behave like watercolors, but you know, if I can mix white and stuff with them, a lot of traditional watercolors don't like to do that. And then I can start, uh, this is that crimson, and I can start to get a pink. Right? Pretty, huh? I like it. I'm having fun. I could do this all day long and let the world go away. Go for a nice walk, have a cup of coffee on the bench, and listen to my, my own heartbeat and myself think again. How about this? Oh yeah, they have, they have this pink. It's not called shock anything, but when you open it up, it's shock. It's neon. Isn't that cool? And when you put neon over other colors, like if I put the neon over that yellow, it's gonna make it like a neon orange. Needs a little bit more yellow, but I'm gonna wet that yellow. I'm not gonna pull another one in. I'm gonna wet it more. All right. And it gets to be more of a neon orange. There's some more yellow. There we go. 
and it gives it a little zing. That's nice. That's nice, right? That's what we say to our cats. That's nice when they try a new food because they're finicky. That's nice. That's nice. All right. You can tell I've gone a little Looney Tune. You would too. And I'm just gonna use all different colors. This is the Cerulean Blue. And I'm just using them straight out of the tube. I'm not really mixing too much here. Just because I want you to see the vitality of the colors, the integrity of the colors. They're very, very um, delicious. They're very highly pigmented. Um, the price, you can't beat the price because you can buy a gouache or a watercolor, um, a name, a big, a different name brand that you've known for years and you won't get this kind of quality, anything near it, uh, a student grade. And these are the price of a student grade gouache, but the pigment is, is killer. So, uh, let's see. I'm gonna mix some colors now. I think I'm gonna make like a muted color, like a muddy color on purpose. Because if I put, a, I'll show you, if I put a muddy color next to a bright color, it kind of makes it pop. Oops. So I made a mud out of three different colors. And I'm gonna put it next to that color. And I know that's a neon color, but you see it when it's next to the white, it does one thing. There's a dark and a light thing happening. But if I put it next to something that's close in value, like these oranges and stuff, then they start to develop a glow. And that's like an intensity contrast. That's a different kind of contrast, not value contrast, it's intensity contrast. And so don't worry about mud because if you put mud deliberately next to bright colors like that, you will um, achieve a glow, okay? Um, and unlike, let's see, I get a dark, uh, I think I only have like a dark, dark purple here. See, that's like a glow, but like if I go here and I just put something dark next to that, really dark, I have a difference between dark and light. I have like a medium and dark, but I don't get that glow. You see it? I don't get the glow, the relationship changes. So the same thing with over here, you know, this makes it pop because it's darker. So it's dark to light because every color has values, multiple values, but it, it won't give you that glow. If I want to, even if I put purple there, which is a compliment next to the yellow, yeah, you're going to get, you're going to get a big, uh, a big difference. It's a value contrast, which is, always powerful. Um, however, if you're looking to kind of make right here, like that yellow isn't glowing at this point. You see how it's glowing up there? It's not glowing there either because they're, they're next to things that are darker or lighter than them. So if I make, um, I make my, I make my purple a little muddy by adding some of the yellow, the same blood to the purple, the yellow, that let, let this and this share the yellow. And then I put that next to that, but it needs to be lighter. It needs to be lighter. Cause it needs to be the same value, but muddy as the yellow in order to glow. So let's see if this will do it. Not, not light enough yet. That's not light enough yet. All right, I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna show you. See, this is still, this is still a value contrast because I don't have my glow yet. Um, so I'm going to lighten that up even more.
I'm probably going to pick up that color because it's now I don't have um, so much dark to light contrast, but I have more of a grayed color next to the yellow and it's starting to glow a little bit more. It needs to be a little bit more neutral and a little bit lighter. So it doesn't really matter what color, but I'm going, I need it to be lighter still so that I make that yellow glow where you start to get a vibration. Do you see the difference there? Do you see the difference? That is still on the show because that needs to now get lighter too. So let me see if I can do that. And then I'm probably gonna have to shut down. I'll try a, a, a blue that's grayed down uh, and it's very light. Let's see what happens. Because what I want is I want the yellow to do the talk in here. To do the popping. Needs to be a little bit lighter and and muddier. Let's see. We're almost there. Not there yet. But do you see how the yellow is starting to uh, starting to glow more here, whereas it kind of recedes there, and it's it's bright because it's yellow. You know, they call it yellow, but it's not uh, making it kind of sparkle. Um, and I think that all my whites are dirty, so I don't know if I can get it to be that that light and that that dirty. Let me see. It's see, because it's gouache, it's picking up the under color, but it needs to be lighter. Let me see if I can go some, I need to let that dry to do that. Let me try it over here. So you can kind of see over here how where the edge is between the dark purple and the yellow, and they are complements, you know, on a color wheel, so that would give you a very big difference. But without the without that, uh, you can start to see that between that light yellow and that light blue, there's just a different kind of glow, or even between here and here. I'll try it. See how this is working here? These are very close in value, but somehow that blue and that green are glowing when they're next to each other because one is pure and the other one is muddy, but they're close in value. But anyway, that's something that takes a, takes quite a while to play around with and learn. And I just wanted to show you those products and uh, where am I? Uh, I'll put commenting back on. Um, oh, yes, yeah, over there. Turn on commenting. Okay. All right. Hello. So anyway, that's uh, that's the skinny on um, the harrowing escapades of having my account kidnapped. And also, I want to tell you one other thing that somebody who's been helping me has told me. They will also, it's really like a kidnapping. They will get to the point where if they can't exhaust your account and they can't get through to all your followers, which I have, a, there's a lot of wiggle room there, everybody, all right, for them to, to hack you. Um, they will actually uh, give you a proposal to buy your account back. It's always about the money. How much will you pay for us to go away and return your account? Kill it. 
I'll see you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know how to turn it off. Maybe that.